Sin pays dividends of death. The more you hang out, the more you subject yourself, the more that you spend time trying to chase after you rather than Jesus, death is going to flourish in your life. And it's going to be everywhere. Now, I do want to say one thing about this because I don't want you to misunderstand this. Just because you're with Jesus doesn't mean that there's not hardship. Okay, some people, some people, they, they, don't, they don't get this, okay? So hardship is not the same as death. Okay, some things are a byproduct, a consequence. Our favorite word today, because nobody gets consequences. Everybody's the victim. But there are consequences for stuff that you do. And those consequences bring about death in our life. Now, when you come over to Christ, some people are like, oh, well, I won't have any consequences anymore. Oh, everything's going to be fine. It's going to be my best life now, and everything's going to be great. Well, to an extent, yes, but it doesn't take away the hardship. So now people get all bent out of shape. Well, hold on. I thought I wasn't going to have any hardship. No, you will have hardship, but hardship draws you back to Jesus so that you can get the answer. People don't like that, but the reality is the hardship does not equate with the death that sin brings. Okay? So I just wanted to clarify that, but it will pay out dividends of death. I'm telling you, you watch what happens when people chase the things that are full-on disobedience to God. It wrecks their life. I'm going to say something that is so not popular, and I know I'm going to make somebody mad, but you need to hear it, and my job is to tell you the truth because I love you. But there are a lot of correlations, a lot of correlations between where most people are at in their mental state today because of horrible sin decisions they made yesterday. No one wants to talk about that, and I'm not trying to make every case, but for a lot of cases, people are in a horrible state because of horrible things they've chosen to do. Sin pays out death. Now watch this. What about, because, you know, I know I'm already wrestling with somebody's mind, but what about those who haven't done anything and now they're experiencing it? Watch this. The danger, the pain, the, the suffering they're experiencing is usually a byproduct. If it's not of their sin, it's of somebody else's. You see how that works? So it's all sin. Either your sin or somebody else's sin. But it's sin that's doing it. So maybe it's not you. Maybe it's what somebody else did to you. Guess what? What they did wasn't right, and that produces death. So either way, that's the dividend. That's what sin does. But Jesus pays out life. And that's why he says, listen, sin no more. There's another place in the New Testament, actually in this letter, uh, in this gospel, where Jesus says something similar to another person. It's the woman who was caught in adultery, which is funny, right? One person caught in adultery? Okay. <laughs> Wonder how that happened. Anyway, so we got one. <laughs> but after, after Jesus defends her, stands in the gap, and sees her in a place where she now has life, he says, go sin no more. Go sin no more. Both are not a prescription for do better. The prescription is follow me. That's the prescription. You understand? So when he's saying go sin no more, he's not saying, okay, go try again. <laughs> don't, don't think that's what he's saying. It's not go try again. It's come follow me. That's how you're going to sin no more. Come follow me. Why? Because we don't have the remedy. You wrote that down, right? Okay. Okay.